because we are recording. So um, this afternoon we have a presentation by uh, four folks from College of Lake County, Donna Carlson, Natalia Casper, Laura Hobart, and Shyam Kurup. And the title of their presentation is Bink Impact of a Small Bold Change. Gen Ed Math is a Gateway to Degrees and to College Algebra. This is where you all gasp. Right. Uh, so why, don't, why don't you all take it away? All right, thank you, Roger. Um, thank you for coming to our session. Yes, you needed to gasp when you read our things. Like, oh. um, all right, I'm Donna Carlson from the Math Department at the College of Lake County. I've actually been with the College of Lake County Math Department for 33 years. So I will let Natalia introduce herself. I'm Natalia Casper, and I've been, I've had the pleasure of being at CLC for 24 years. Laura? Hi, I'm Laura Hobart, and I've been at CLC for 21 years. Uh, my name is Sham Krupp. I usually say it's like Schomburg, and you'll all get that because you're from Illinois. Um, so yeah, uh, I've been at the Council of County, I think this is my 15th year, and uh, I teach both math and computer science. All right. So... When uh, we first kind of began thinking about this pathway that we're going to talk to you about today, we were doing some self-reflection. So this was around 2018-ish. And what we felt like was that our students in developmental math were on like one of those traffic roundabouts where you're just kind of going round and around and they're never actually exiting the roundabout onto the highway that would get them to meet their goals and get a life-changing credential. So for example, this statistic was really um, hit us, 75.7% .7 of CLC students at that time that completed basic algebra never ended up taking a college level math course. And at that time also 49% of our math enrollment was in developmental education. Go ahead, Natalia. Um, Itzel is a CLC student, but she's not alone in her situation. She was unsuccessful three times when she took intermediate algebra. Our department wanted to know as part of our self-reflection, why did she keep taking intermediate algebra? So back in January of 2018 is when that chief academic officers released the draft document of what is now the Dev Ed Reform Act that defined placement uh, on college ready in math. And um, original document uh, had gen ed math, math for elementary ed teachers, and it also included uh, college algebra in that list. Um, so when this first came out, this is a huge shock to our department. And personally, I was a little bit offended by their interference. Uh, but as we sat down and we talked about it and we reflected on it, we realized that this was just the catalyst that our department needed to reimagine our placement and to pull us from that rut of doing the things the same way that we've always done. And after a lot of uh, discussion and reflection as a department, uh, we decided that we wanted to keep college algebra in that uh, same list um, for placement based on college ready and math, even though it got ultimately pulled from the um, from the from the DARA. However, um, we ran into a glitch because our college algebra success rates were already pretty dismal, uh, like less than 50%. So we knew that by opening access, we would also have to make adjustments to our curriculum. Go ahead, Natalia. So on the left-hand side here uh, with that triangle, that's our uh, SAT placement triangle. So you can see the purple there, the 530, uh, we have gen ed math, college algebra, and the math for elementary ed teachers placement. Um, also, that Band-Aid icon there is the corresponding math ACT of 22 and an ALEC score of 46 for placement into college algebra. And I also want you to notice that uh, the pre-calc is in the green tier. So we do differentiate between placement in college algebra versus um, pre-calc. So to adjust the, um, the opening access for more students, uh, we decided that we were going to add an extra credit hour to our college algebra. So we went from four credit hours to uh, five credit hours. 
And with the idea that that extra credit hour we would ex uh, spend on just in time review. So we didn't jam 15 hours of intermediate algebra review in the beginning. We did just in time review throughout the semester. We did run into a little pushback from admin who wanted us to run a co-requisite model for just those students in the bubble. But we argued that because our success rates were pretty dismal, that we wanted to include that extra credit hour for everyone. And we called it an embedded co-requisite model and, um, and that went through. And we started this in uh, summer of 2019. Uh, back to you, Natalia. Um, of course, we, when we first started looking at our developmental sequence, we wanted to know who was taking these courses, specifically in intermediate algebra. So we asked our research department to give us the breakdown of the students who placed into college level gen ed math, but enrolled in intermediate algebra instead. We discovered in the previous nine semesters that over 74% 74, 74 of these students were associate and art students. We were shocked to discover that these AA students were taking a developmental math when the goal of intermediate algebra was designed for the STEM path. The success rate of these AA students in intermediate algebra was below 50%. They became stuck in the roundabout of development, developmental math, or they left CLC without an AA credential. Sean? If I can advance the slide. There we go. So yeah, with uh, discovery of these alarming enrollment trends, we set out to find out why. What was going on? Why were these students taking Math 108 uh, when they had declared that they were looking for an AA degree? And that's not the intention of the Intermediate Algebra course. And what we found was that uh, it was it was us. It was it was our own advising documents that was leading to this. So what you see here is a flow chart that was part of our college catalog, uh, is what students saw if they went into the catalog, is what advisors at the college saw when they used it to advise our own students at enrollment. And the intention of the flow chart was to break down by goal what kind of degree you were trying to uh, pursue and show the sequence of courses that you might take in math to get that degree. And what happened was, well, Math 108, our intermediate algebra course, ended up listed in several of these boxes as a good starting point, which it could be, but it wasn't really intended that way. And so it turned into, unintentionally, a gateway class at our college. And so many, many, many students were enrolling it uh, that didn't really need it. Uh, it wasn't really appropriate for them. So back to Itzel. To answer the question, why did she keep taking intermediate algebra? Because that's what we were telling her to do. That's what she was advised to do. Uh, she met the prerequisite for a gen ed math course, a college credit math course, and was an AA student. And yet, through our advising documents, through what the advisors were used to telling our students, uh, she was encouraged to take this intermediate algebra course. And she kept doing it over and over again, unsuccessfully. So with this, it was kind of an aha moment for our department. Like, why are all of these AA students um, taking intermediate algebra? So this is where the general education math pathway concept was formed. Go ahead, Natalia, you can flip it. One thing that we wanted to look at is what were some of the most popular sub plans at the college? I mean, everyone has a plan in AAAS, AAS certificate, whatever. We were looking for what were the most popular sub plans. And you can see this list right here. All of them, except for the math computer science, are AA degree plans. So AA degree at the college, you need one general education math course to meet the math requirement for the Associate of Arts degree. At our college, it's Math 140, 141, and 142. I can tell you what those are in a second. Go ahead and advance the slide, Natalia. All right, our three Gen Ed math classes. So whenever you hear us say Gen Ed math, we're referring to one of these three. We have contemporary mathematics, quantitative literacy, and general education statistics. 
These courses are just like the ones you have your, at your college. They follow the articulation guide. These are our gen ed math classes. Okay, you can advance. All right, so something that is unique to our college is we accept two years of high school approved algebra and what we call basic, basic algebra readiness at our school. That's kind of like, uh, it's a whole college um, mark and it's a 17 ACT or a 490 SAT or a 14 Alex, that's basic algebra readiness. So for years and years, students that have had two years of high school algebra, algebra one and algebra two and basic algebra readiness meet the prereq for gen ed math. And lots and lots of our students meet this prereq. So we were capitalizing on that idea that these students that meet the prereq, they've had algebra one and algebra two in high school. So they have algebra in their background. We also learned that a gen ed math course actually already met the prerequisite for some other courses at our college, um, introductory courses in biology, chemistry, physics, computer science, and accounting. They all had intermediate algebra listed as their catalog prereq, but they took anything above that. So they were already accepting students that had gen ed math into their courses. So as a result, we added gen ed math as a prerequisite for our new college algebra class. <laughs> That's the gasp. <laughs> All right, take it away, Laura. All right, so this is our new advising document uh, that we created for our counselors and advisors who were um, talking to students about what math class to take. And now we have a top-down approach. So with our four categories, for example, you can see that engineering and math uh, cap up at the top. Suppose you had BC Calc and you got a four or five. You can start, jump right into that Calc 3. If not, do you meet the prereq for Calc 2? Do you meet the Calc uh, one prereq. So you go down until you're fitting into the right spot. And then also the big blue box at the bottom say, this is our gateway class. Take the gen ed math class. This is the gateway class. Now we've all had those students who come to us and they say, I want to be an engineer. I want to major in business, but they're starting at a very low math level. And some of them make it, but many of them switch pathways. And then here's the beauty of this approach current AA students and students who start down a different pathway, but either then switch to an AA degree, um, they already have those three credits of math checked off. So they already meet the math prereq often in their first year. So they're ready to go on and get that degree. All right, next slide, Natalia. So why did we, uh, think that this is a good idea. So we theorized and we found it to be correct that gen ed is actually a good entry point for AA students. And you can read that list of skills there under the bullet points. And one thing I want you to notice is that in there, we're not talking about pushing the X around. Our course reference files for these gen ed math classes are the same ones that you have. We're not adding in a bunch of uh, algebra. Students who place directly into gen ed math, they already have the algebra skills. And then when they're in gen ed math, they're learning those additional soft uh, skills for um, how to take a college class, uh, you know, two hours of study for every hour in class. They're learning those quantitative skills and those combined make them ready for college algebra. Uh, it shows that they have the grit that they can continue. And then this pathway also then uh, as Donna mentioned, opens the door into other math and science courses and ultimately a degree. And then here is the truly awesome thing about this pathway is it's not just a math department initiative. We have buy-in from the whole college. So we started in, we talked to the administrators. They're all on board with this. The counselors and advisors know this pathway. And then in addition to that, we've talked to the other departments that use college algebra or placement into college algebra as their prereq. So in other words, intermediate algebra. Now, gen ed math also is placement into college algebra. So there's two pathways into placement in college algebra 
and these courses now accept the gen ed, um, math in addition. So it really opens up a huge door for our students. And the dev ed roundabout is virtually empty because students don't even have to get on it anymore. So the goal is to not go back and take that dev ed math class. All right, next slide. So here's our placement into Gen Ed Math. Uh, we do not run a co-requisite model uh, with our Gen Ed Math classes. You either place into Gen Ed Math or you don't, but we feel like we're pretty generous with our placement. So starting at the bottom is our traditional intermediate algebra class. And then we have the Alex score of 35. Now that cut score is a little bit lower than the ones I checked for our sister schools, but we found that it's effective for our Gen Ed Math placement. And I do wanna mention our college algebra Alex score is a 46. So we do require a higher Alex score for um, college algebra. And then that ACT of 22, uh, that's uh, set by the College Ready in Math, our traditional PMG class. And our transitional math classes um, for our feeder high schools uh, was implemented not this academic year, but the uh, year before. So um, our incoming freshmen next year <laughs> that start school in 2022, that will have two full years that of our high schools having run tra transitional math. The high school GPA, um, again, set by the college ready in math. And then again, I just wanna emphasize our uh, kind of our unique placement in, with the four semesters of high school algebra. So that we've had that for literally decades at College of Lake County and Donna is our high school outreach. And she has looked at the curriculum for all of our area high schools. So it cannot be a fluff algebra class that says algebra one, she looks at all the curriculum and deems whether it uh, meets the, the criteria necessary to be a true algebra one or algebra two class. And um, Yep, that's it. Uh, so back to you, Natalia. Uh, can you imagine spending $1,500 and getting nothing in return? And that's what uh, Itzel did. She took uh, intermediate algebra three times. Would you keep doing it? Most do not. But Itzel had a dream of graduating. Our promotion of intermediate algebra being the gateway course was the issue. Advisors reached out to Itzel and other students to let them know we shifted the gateway to Gen Ed Math. She took it the first fall, we opened it up and she graduated that December. Sorry, I'm doing two things at the same time here. There we go. Uh, before the gateway shift, we were like other community colleges, 49% of math enrolled students were in developmental math, pre-algebra, basic algebra, PMGE, and intermediate. With a large calling campaign notifying students about the new gateway, the first semester we saw a drop in developmental math enrollment. Note, we did not have opportunity to change the information in the catalog yet. What percentage do you guess the developmental enrollment dropped to in the first semester the new pathway was offered. So I want you to put guesses in the chat. So in fall of 2018, we were at 49% enrollment in developmental math. I'm asking you to guess for what fall 2019 would have, what percentage? Can one of my colleagues read off guesses? <laughs> the guesses were 15, 25%, 20%, 25%, 30%, 10%. Right. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so to the suspense, it was 31%, uh, 31%. Uh, now that the advising piece is set, catalog, website, and advisor, and the trans, uh, transitional math is uh, fully implemented, we see in fall 2020 that it did drop to 21%. And then we did do uh, what happened this past fall. 
Um, after two years, we see a slowdown in the drop. We are proud to say that our enrollment in developmental math is under 20%. Specifically, our pre-algebra is at 2.2%. Basic algebra is at 3.3%. PMGE is at 7.5%. And intermediate algebra is at 5.4%. And then here is a recap of all the pie charts on one page to show the transformation of our developmental ed. And so now that we have them there, now that we have the students um, switching from developmental ed to uh, gen ed, um, how are they doing? And Sean will answer that. So yeah, uh, we were thrilled with these enrollment numbers, uh, but of course it's not just enough to shift enrollments, right? We wanna see our students succeed. So we're also looking at the success rates in the courses. Um, here are uh, uh, some statistics on the two major courses that are affected by this. So college algebra was revised as Laura uh, described earlier. Uh, it's now a five credit hour course. Uh, it now has that just-in-time review. So you can see that, that shift between the uh, three years that are in green before to the uh, current model of college algebra that we have, the two bars in blue that we have uh, statistics for. And uh, it, it, we do see a gradual uh, increase, it looks like, in success rates in that course. So despite the uh, greater number of students taking college algebra, dis despite the greater access, we are actually seeing a higher percentage of students succeed. So we, we want to improve on that. That's not certainly enough for us. We want to get uh, more and more students succeeding in that course, but uh, it's promising. We, we, we think we're on the right track as, that's, as far as that's concerned. Uh, and then in the gen ed math courses, the three courses that Donna mentioned uh, that are now our gateway really uh, for students coming into CLC, taking an AA degree, uh, potentially starting in an undecided uh, place, uh, we're looking at success there. We've seen a little bit more up and down, but uh, where that marker is, where we really open that pathway 2019 and beyond, uh, we have success rates that are 55, 62%. Remember that intermediate algebra course, that 108 course was below 50%. And students that succeeded in that, they still weren't even earning a college credit. Uh, so here, if we get our 55%, 62% of students that finish this course successfully, this is A, B, or C, uh, they have a college credit, they can earn an AA degree, and now they can also, uh, if they so choose, move into college algebra with that C or better. Uh, if they get a D, which is not even included in these percentages, they can still get the degree, uh, they just can't move on to the college algebra. Uh, we also wanted to look at how this pathway affects the college algebra. So uh, before, right, the students coming into college algebra, these are the two bars of green that you see on these bar graphs. Uh, before, they were either coming in very, via other measures, so their uh, scores on standardized tests, scores on Alex, uh, scores from other institutions, whatever, um, transfer credits. And then uh, intermediate algebra, so our developmental course. Those were those were really the two ways that students could get into our college algebra. And what we saw was a decidedly lower uh, percentage of students succeeding coming in from our developmental math. So even the ones that passed through our intermediate algebra didn't necessarily have a great success rate in college algebra. Uh, right? We we think oh we need to train them up in algebra so that they can take algebra but that didn't really pan out a lot, uh, only 41.8%. So now we're looking at the blue bars. This is after the modifications to both the college algebra course and the gateway from gen ed math. So we're now looking at gen ed math as students coming in to college algebra, having taken gen ed math, not meeting one of the other measures, not having taken the intermediate algebra course. And uh, what we see is um, all the percentages are higher, which uh, we like. We think that's because of the modifications to the college algebra course itself. Uh, but the gen ed math students, the students that come in via one of those three courses, uh, despite those courses not being algebra intensive, are doing at least as well, if not better, than their peers who are coming in via our intermediate algebra course. And so it seems to support our theory that it works very well as a gateway. 
uh, potentially giving them that grit, that college experience. They have algebra somewhere in their background, but now we're adding in uh, uh, some motivation to complete a college credit course and then go on to college algebra, which has five credit hours, which has the just-in-time review, and they can succeed there as well. Uh, again, we want to bring the success rates of all of this up, but we're very pleased with our preliminary um, results over these, over these last couple of years. Uh, still, the bulk of the students taking college algebra are coming directly in, just like Laura said. We want a student to go in at the level they're ready for. So if they can get into college algebra, absolutely, go into college algebra. If you can get into calculus, calculus too, go into those. Uh, but if they're coming in via gen ed math, um, like 330 students did over these past couple of years, well, they're doing okay. They're, they're actually managing in college algebra. And if they decide it's not for them, they want to step back, they want to change pathways, they've got that college credit in their pocket. Uh, at the College of Lake County, our strategic plan uh, focuses on certain measures to uh, see, you know, measure our progress at the college. And one of these measures is a measurement of the number of students that are completing a credit math course during their first year, right? A, a part of the, the legislation really emphasizing this type of goal. And uh, for years and years and years, this was a really rough measure for us, right? So we were in the 20%. Uh, students were not getting to a college credit math course. They were not completing it during their first year. So it was a long journey uh, that really um, frustrates students, causes students to leave. Uh, just in that first fall that we opened up this gateway, we've already hit the college's target mark of raising it to 38%. We think this will go up even higher, uh, but we're very pleased with uh, the number of students that are able to earn a college credential uh, using this pathway. Okay, so as Shem said, we are not uh, satisfied with our successful that's always on our radar. We want to increase our successful completion, but our current efforts also include, uh, we're going to be looking at disaggregated data with a lens towards equity. And we've got a bunch of initiatives with that. We have been integrating department-wide faculty professional development. Um, we have some lead teachers in our gen ed math and our college algebra who've been really working hard every two weeks. They deliver a session for professional development for math faculty, which is great. We also have a lead teacher in PMG, by the way. Um, and then something else we're working on is because our enrollment has shifted to college credit bearing math versus a way smaller amount of dev ed math, we had an issue with staffing. So we've been trying to do some initiatives to address the fact that we, we have a hard time staffing our college credit classes because you need different qualifications. So we're working on that as well. So with that, we are done with our formal part of our presentation. So we'll open it up for questions. Uh, I don't know if you noticed there was a question from Frederick in the chat about sharing some stats. Um, he asked if you could share stats on B or better instead of C or better and, uh, and or stats on success in a follow on math course. Do you have anything like that? Uh, we don't have stats on B or better uh, at the moment. And in terms of stats on success in the following math course, that's what Sean shared. He shared the success in college algebra based on um, how students got in. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure what you're asking for there. Can you clarify? Yes, after college algebra after college algebra. All right, we don't have data at the moment for college algebra and beyond. So we don't have that at the moment. So we did request uh, data from our research um, department. Uh, they, 
we just got the college algebra ones probably last week. Uh, we've also requested um, data from accounting, uh, who is one of the courses that students take. Um, now they have it as uh, accounting publicized gen ed math as a prerequisite or intermediate algebra, so um, our financial accounting. So we requested data from that, um, our intro bio courses and our chemistry courses, uh, because that's originally our um, focus um, and we're waiting on those. And then, but uh, it's just the beginning of the requests of data. And uh, there has been in our school, uh, a big uh, change in our research department. We just have a new leadership there and uh, been in that position less than a year. And uh, currently, a lot of the data requests that we've been having in our department have been put on hold. Uh, they did allow us to have this uh, data uh, for this presentation. So I just wanted okay. to give a little bit of clarification. I don't blame you at all. I'm just curious. Yes. Yeah. We are also curious. Just all we are also the, the other thing of, of note is when you, when you look beyond college algebra, it, it um, is much more varied. So we were looking for the highest impact, the largest bang for our buck. Um, so we were looking at, you know, all these students who are in developmental math and we saw that, oh, a gen ed math will impact a large number of students getting that AA degree, getting a credential, moving on from CLC. Uh, whereas the college algebra is a course that students can end with, um, but they, they may need that for math and elementary teaching. Um, for a business transfer, but not necessarily everybody needs that course and not necessarily everybody that takes that course takes any more math after that course. So uh, it, it's gonna break down a little bit smaller and in more detail, but, but we're absolutely looking at all those things uh, moving forward. Uh, and, and then a, a, as um, Donna was mentioning, the, the gen ed math as a uh, prerequisite into introductory courses in other fields, like, like my own computer science department, um, that's also something we really are interested in looking at and monitoring. And, and, and if that succeeds, that's that's even better as a gateway. It isn't causing any problems with those who want to be teachers um, and satisfying a geometry requirement. I'm, I'm not sure how to answer that one. Anybody? Uh, yeah. Well, at the college, we have um, determined the college ready in math. So kind of from the, um, the DARA that, you know, the state is even determining college ready in math for those math for elementary teachers. Now, I will say going through all of the high school curriculum, all of the students in our county, at least, that um, I probably shouldn't say all because there's probably exceptions, but just about everybody has algebra one, geometry, algebra two, or math one, two, and three. So um, we're pretty confident that the geometry is being met if they've met the college ready benchmark in math. Thanks. I, it was my fault for asking. I, I should have recognized college ready as opposed to algebra proficient. It's more than just algebra proficient. Okay. Thank you. Well, I have another question for you. Um, so, uh, Sham had pointed out the increase in the success rates. Um, now, you know, Dara says maximize the probability of, you know, completing that college level class within the first two semesters. And I noticed that you still have a few developmental courses that a student might go through. Do you guys have any plans for additional changes to shorten up some of those pathways? Or do you feel like this will kind of maximize that probability? I can answer that unless one of the other people want to. Um, go ahead, Donna. I, the Math 105, the PMGE, is the bulk of the developmental enrollment that you see. And then the intermediate algebra folks, they can finish their course in 
they can go into a college level class of the second semester. So it's really only anyone who's in basic algebra or in our pre-algebra class that wouldn't have the chance to finish in just two semesters. So let me talk a little bit about the basic algebra students. At our college, a lot of our career programs use basic algebra as an entrance requirement. So there's quite a few of our enrollment in basic algebra that have no intention of going on to intermediate algebra. So it serves a definite purpose for them. Um, and in terms of the pre-algebra, I think the state does realize that not every student is going to get into a college level class their second semester. All right, so we all know that there's these students in pre-algebra that are going to have to um, take a few more semesters. And that is a very small percentage. What was it again, Natalia? 2.2% uh, is in pre-algebra. So the right. majority of our 18%, our current 18% in developmental are PMGE at 7.5 and intermediate algebra at 5.4. So those are our bulk of our 18% who are in, in developmental. I do wanna add that um, the cost for students who start in math 101, which is our pre-algebra, is uh, we'll, we'll be starting this fall, coming fall, fall 2022, um, will be reduced because we are reducing from four credit hours to three credit hours. We also have a, an OER for that course. And uh, so, yes, they still have to take, uh, uh, if they continue on they, uh, to get to college level, it will take longer than two semesters, but we are trying to reduce the cost of that. Great, thanks so much. Any other questions from the audience? Concerns or, or happiness? Thanks, Amy. <laughs> Well, we're very excited. That's why we came here. We are very excited to share the news and, and we're seeing um, the, that uh, um, hypothesis you know, playing out, which is uh, excellent. So thank you for letting us share with you. And if you do have questions, please, please, please contact any one of us. Thank y'all for coming. All right. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I think we will end it there. And uh, yeah, the recording will go up uh, sometime in the next week or so on the uh, iMac YouTube channel. So <laughs> I'm sure that'll be um, uh, distributed to all the participants in the conference. So thanks again. And hope to see thank everyone you. at Allerton next year uh, for a live in-person conference. <laughs>